today, we've got a new series, our new seller strategy masterclass, where I'm going to focus on a specific aspect of top strategies that you can be doing. Today, we're going to be talking about keyword research, and I'm going to have some top strategies that are going to help you increase your sales on Amazon. How cool is that? Pretty cool, I think. Want to check estimated sales for products you see on Amazon? Or maybe you want to instantly see how many listings on page one of a search term result have the actual search keyword in the title. You can find all of these things out and more with the Helium 10 Chrome extension tool, X-Ray. More than 1 million people have used this tool. Find out what it can do for you by downloading it for free at h10.me forward slash X-Ray. h10.me forward slash X-Ray. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I am your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that's a completely BS-free, unscripted, and unrehearsed, organic conversation about serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. And this is now a new series I'm going to be doing within the podcast every few weeks or so, and I think I'm going to call it the uh, Serious Strategies Masterclass. Now, each one of these serious strategies masterclasses will focus on a specific uh, Helium 10 tool. In this case, we are going to be talking strictly about keyword research um, using my favorite tool, Cerebro. All right, Cerebro. Now, right off the bat, you know, if you're not a Helium 10 member, I don't want you guys tuning out. The, these are actual strategies that regardless if you have Helium 10 or not, you should be using for your Amazon and or Walmart business. Now, here's the thing. Uh, I don't want you thinking this is some kind of, you know, like our pro training learn button videos where, all right, this column does this and this is how this works. No, no, we already have tons of videos like that. This is called Serious Strategy Masterclass because it's 100% based on actual strategies. I'm going to be going over 25 different scenarios on the things that you can be doing uh, using Cerebro in order to kind of like up your Amazon keyword research game. Like for an example, one of them is how to find long tail keywords that your competitors are ranking for. Uh, another one, how to find the keywords that the Amazon algorithm actually recommends a seller to advertise for. How to find the top sponsored keywords for a product or a niche or a group of products, et cetera. 25 of these scenarios we are going to go ahead and go over. Um, I'm not even sure if I can fit this all in one episode. If it's, if this one, you know, if this takes too long, I'm going to have to just like split this into two episodes, but I really want, you know, to, to make sure I'm giving you guys a lot of value and stuff that are actionable. Now, right off the bat, I want to make sure that everybody knows uh, who should be tuning in, who should be listening to this. You know, sometimes we will do episodes on here that, you know, maybe only apply to brand new sellers. Um, other times there might be something that's like, you know what, only super advanced sellers, you know, should be, um, you know, considering these strategies, these 25 strategies, guys, I don't care if you're brand new or if you're doing nine figures on Amazon, almost every single one of these is applicable to what you guys should be doing. You know, whether you got seller central, whether you got vendor central, whether you're selling on Walmart, these are kind of like universal strategies that are going to help you level up, whether you're a beginner or a scaled advanced seller. All right, let's go ahead and hop right into it with strategy number one. Strategy number one is how to find the top performing organic keywords for a product. This is going to, this was the uh, origination of Cerebro. We're going to keep it simple at first, and then we're going to progressively show you uh, more advanced techniques. All right. So let's say you're just, you know, on Amazon and you are browsing coffin shelves. Okay. The, the easiest way, like maybe I see here, Hey, look at this, this product here. Uh, I'm looking as Amazon's choice. And I want to know what are the top keywords that are driving sales? Like how in the world did this get Amazon's choice? It's probably, uh, you know, performing pretty well. I could just click, uh, right here on Amazon and then I could run on Cerebro or I can just copy and paste this ASIN into Cerebro. And if I do that, uh, this is what comes up here in Cerebro. And it's actually going to show me, uh, about 2000 related keywords, uh, to this product. Now, this question is how to find the top performing organic keywords. Now there's no magic number, but I like looking uh, at where they're between like one 
and 15 the last time helium 10 check as far as their organic rank all right and you know i don't think one of their top keywords is something that they are uh you know that that's searched for 100 times a month or 200 times a month so let's just say i'm going to put a minimum of 500 search volume and these are just the easy filters i'm going to run and within like not even one second i've got a list of their top 12 keywords We've got Coffin Decor, Coffin Shelf, which they had Amazon's choice for. And as you can see here, do you guys, uh, those of you watching this on YouTube, you can see that there is a colored Amazon's choice. That means that the last time Helium 10 checked, this product had Amazon's choice. And sure enough, you know, I'm looking at Amazon.com right now, and this product does have Amazon's choice. If you ever see this Amazon's choice logo in Helium 10 Cerebro, but it's not colored in with the black, that means that there was Amazon's choice somewhere on that page, but it wasn't this uh, product. But right there, super simple, guys. I mean, this is just, you know, seems like it's a no brainer kind of tactic. And you guys have been using this for years, but this is something that you can't really do with a lot of, you know, uh, you know, websites and things like that, where you can instantly see where these uh all of the keywords that they're organically ranking at the top of the page. So it gives you great insight. Um, you can do this on any Amazon listing and you can also do it on a Walmart uh, listing as well. Speaking of international listings, I'm not even counting this as one of the top 25, but uh, just to let you know, what I'm showing you guys today, it can be done in a, a lot of different marketplaces. I mentioned, you, uh, or I'm doing this in Amazon USA. You can also do it in Walmart, in, in Helium 10 Cerebro, but also this uh, these functions work in Canada, Mexico, Amazon Germany, Amazon Spain, Amazon Italy, France, UK, Amazon India, Amazon Netherlands, Australia, Japan, and the United Arab Emirates. So make sure that you guys are doing this in your core marketplace for every um, for every listing or marketplace that you are researching. You know, don't just like try and translate these words. Anyways, there's one strategy, one and a half kind of strategies. Uh, let's go ahead and go to number two: how to check the seasonality of a keyword. So let's hop right back into this keyword list that we had here. Anytime you see any keyword at all inside of Cerebro, uh, when you see the search volume, there is this graph button that is right next to it. And this is important guys, all right? In the coffin shelf, I don't think we're gonna see too much seasonality, uh, but there are some keywords that, that will have some seasonality. For example, here's a keyword that came up for this product called Halloween shelf, all right? But regardless, when you are considering something your top keyword, I always suggest taking a few of these and clicking this graph because I want to see um, how seasonal it really is. All right. Like, for example, Halloween shelf. If I look at this and by the way, this seasonality, I can look on Google Trends. I can look on Walmart. I can look on Amazon all in the same graph. I'm going to take a look at all time what we have of this and we see that this we didn't even show search volume for this keyword back in the day. And it is only showing up in the last, uh, you know, in the last few weeks where all of a sudden now it's getting like 500, 600 uh, search volume. Now, Halloween shelf, if I'm expecting this to have 600 search volume throughout the year, I, I'd be making a big mistake. You know, you cannot just look at search volume, guys, and think that it's the same throughout the year. Now, what are some that might not uh, be as drastic as that, where it goes from zero to 500. Well, let's look at coffin shelf. Let's see if there's any seasonality here. I click the graph. Uh, I'm actually going to go all time on this keyword. And you can see that, you know, typically it's between like 5,000 to 10,000, but you do see peaks. Like last year, there was a peak coming up in August and September. Sure enough, this year again, August and September, we see a peak. Now, again, this is important because some keywords you might not even realize are are seasonal. Now, if it had Halloween or Christmas in it, I think you guys can pretty much figure out that it's seasonal. But don't assume, guys. Don't assume that people you know look at the, uh, this stuff kind of like the same throughout uh, throughout the year because there are some keywords that have some seasonality to it. So again, anytime you see a a search volume graph inside of Cerebro click it, you know, on, when you're looking at uh, a few of the main keywords and open it up on Google Trends, open it up on Walmart, open it up on Amazon and see if you see peaks and valleys of search volume. Uh, and this will give you an idea 
on you know the, the competitiveness uh, of this keyword at different times and also when people are searching for it more. Number three, how you can see if the exact PP, uh, the exact PPC campaign strategy for a competitor. Now, I actually looked up a couple more uh, coffin shelves here, and one other coffin shelf that was on page one. This was a, a bamboo coffin shelf. Wow, it's pretty interesting. Now they're making bamboo coffin shelves. But what you guys can do is whenever you see, uh, or whenever you run Cerebro on one product. Take a look at this keyword distribution chart that comes up in Cerebro. It's right in the middle of the page. This product has zero sponsored keywords. What does that mean? That means that we did not detect them in any sponsored ads in the last 30 days or so. All right. So do I know their exact PPC strategy? Absolutely. I do. Their strategy is no strategy. They are not running ads on Amazon. So this is kind of cool. Like if you ever find you know, some top sellers. I don't think this is one of the top coffin shelves. I was just trying to look for random ones that, you know, might have had some kind of specific strategy here. But if you're looking at top competitors and you notice one or two of them aren't even running sponsored ads, like, you know, that could be a good uh, good sign in your in your actual product research. Uh, take, for example, um, this one that we, the, the first one that I showed you, that one that has Amazon's choice, we showed him for 600 sponsored keywords about now, does this mean I know his exact sponsored strategy? No. The reason is, if you see 600, 1,000, 10,000 keywords that we've detected them in, what does that mean? They're probably running a lot of phrase match, broad campaigns, uh, auto campaigns. Um, so, you know, a lot of these could just be Amazon showing them randomly, right? It's not necessarily the seller's personal strategy. But I showed you that one that had only, or that had zero, right? Um, here's another one. Let, let me show you. This is kind of like where I can find their exact strategy. Take a look here. This is another coffin shelf from uh, page one. And look at this 35 sponsored keywords. If they've got 35 sponsored keywords, probably like nine times out of 10, this is their exact match campaign, their entire exact match campaign, because it probably includes plural fo forms of the word and, and other, you know, forms as well. You know, if they're running an auto campaign, unless they're like, have a, like a zero cent bid and like a $1 budget, you know, it's going to show for more than 35 keywords. So in this case, I actually know their entire sponsored strategy. So what I would do is when I see something that has so few sponsored keywords, I'm going to go up here and end, under the filters, hit match type, and I'm gonna hit sponsored, all right? And then I'm gonna head, go ahead and apply these filters, and I'm going to see all 35 of these keywords. And these are most likely the ones that they are targeting, all right? Um, you know, I see here grunge decor, grunge wall decor, coffin decor, I see skull bookshelf, uh, skulls gift, so I can I can see easily what their exact campaign is. Not only that, I am going to be able to see where they are concentrating, you know, their spend. I'm going to go into this a, a little bit more later, but you know, where they're showing up uh, as one of the top sponsored ranks. So this is pretty cool, guys. Sometimes there are sellers out there who are not running auto and broad campaigns, and you can reverse engineer their entire PPC strategy, you know, using Helium 10. Super, super cool uh, function. So that's number three, guys. All right. Uh, number four is how to see the keywords that a competitor is concentrating the most in their PPC. All right. I kind of showed you a little bit of that, uh, in number three, but let's go back to that first one that had Amazon's choice that I was talking about. They had a total of 600 keywords, right? Well, which ones are they most focusing on? You know, they are probably not equally spending their, their budget, their PPC budget on all 600 of those keywords. Well, the strategy that you would use, you would go into Cerebro. Here's this list of 600 keywords. I'm going to say match type sponsored and then sponsored rank. I'm going to say between one and 15. That means probably their sponsored ad is at least on page one. Usually for higher search volume ones, they're going to have to be bidding a little bit higher or possibly doing a top of search bid. And look at this. They are actually not out of all those 600 um, keywords. They are only at the top of the search for seven keywords, all right? 
guys, this is like, I hope you understand how cool this is, what kind of insights you are getting. Um, you are getting now, now, this is not helium 10 hacking somebody's account and trying to show this to you. This is all public information. You know, if I were to search all these keywords, I would literally see probably that they're running sponsored ads here, but we're doing all that hard work for you. So look at this. I have coffin shelf, coffin shelves, goth shelf, uh, letter shape shelf, goth shelves. Like I have their entire list right here of their keywords that they are probably bidding high or doing some kind of of top of search. All right, guys, this is, these are things you need to be using like right now to, to be check, taking a look at some of your competitors to see if you can reverse engineer some of their success. Or if you're launching a new product, you know, you would probably, you know, under normal circumstances, like five, six years ago, you know, how would you know which keywords that you might want to, you know, focus on for your sponsored ads? Well, you would just have to kind of do that by trial and error and see what you're performing well. And you still got to do that nowadays, but you have a leg up now on the people who launched years ago and they didn't have tools like this or all the people who don't have tools like this because from day one, if there is a top seller that has Amazon's choice and they're the number one selling coffin shelf, they're obviously doing something right, right? So from day one of your own product, now you're going to be able to see, hey, you know what? It's working for this guy uh, in sponsored ads. I probably should probably focus on these keywords as well. All right, so that was number number four. Let's go to number five, which is how to find the top 10 to 15 organic keywords for a niche or group of products, all right? So first of all, how can you find the niche of products? Uh, there's one way. Let's just say I have uh, one product I have um, as a seed product, like one random coffin shelf. If I put the ASIN into Cerebro without ever even going to Amazon, I can hit get competitors and I am going to be able to see um, a list of a bunch of similar products here, similar coffin shelves. I can see some bat shelves and I can just select all of these right here. And then I'm going to be able to you know, open up a search for Cerebro. However, what I like to do is I actually like to go to Amazon and find the main keyword or keywords and actually do the search on Amazon because I like incorporating sales as well. So if I'm here on Amazon on the main keyword, I'm going to, I'm going to hit X-ray. Um, and all, here's all of the uh, products that, that show up on page one. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to sort it by sales here. And then, uh, I'm going to select a seed product. You know, if I don't have my own, I'm just going to select a, a random one here. And, and then all of the other products should be the main products that are coffin shelves. All right. Now, have you, as you notice here, and you guys might notice this too, this is very important. Just because somebody is on the same page as your product does not mean that they are like a main competitor of yours. For example, on this coffin shelf page, look at this. I see a coffin letter board. I personally feel I'm not competing with for sales for this. If somebody's searching coffin shelf, they're probably looking for a coffin shelf. Now, do I want to rank for some keywords that coffin letter board is ranking for? Sure. You know, it's somewhat relevant to my product. Do I want to rank for uh, keywords that a coffin makeup shelf is ranking for? Sure. You know, that that's somewhat related to my product. But if I am looking for the top 10 to 15 organic keywords for a uh, for a group of products, all right? I want to be only looking at the direct competitors. And I've talked about this for years now. How you do that is like form, function, price are three ways to know. So I, I don't want to compare my $30 coffin shelf that I'm planning to make or something to a, you know, $300 six foot tall coffin shelf. That That's not the competitor of my product. Um, the same thing is like if I have a bright pink coffin shelf, I might not be comparing it to a jet black coffin shelf because the keywords that somebody would search for one is a lot of them are going to be different than the other. So I'm just looking for the closest competitor. So I like doing this visual check in x-ray to make sure that I am selecting those. So I can just select those right here. And once I have all of these selected, uh, at that point, I'm going to go ahead and run them and uh, go right into Cerebro. And it will go ahead and show me all of the keywords 
that are related to any one of these products. Now, in this case, I selected here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different coffin shelves, all right? And it found me a total of 8,000 keywords. Now, what did I say I'm trying to do? I wanna find the top 10 to 15 organic ones, all right? So this is kind of like step one when you're doing your principal keyword research where you wanna find you know, seemingly relevant keywords to an entire niche of products and the entire group of products as opposed to just one product like we showed you in step one. I can actually start this process with just one click, all right? This is a, called a one-click filter. I'm just gonna hit top keywords, all right? One click and that's it. Boom goes the dynamite. I can see it actually did filter it down to nine. Um, now, there, there, there's my top 10 keywords. Now, what did it, uh, what did it do? It said that, hey, I wanna find a competitor rank average of one to 40. The reason why I'm now breaking down these filters that it actually did, even though you know you just do it in one filter is because maybe you come up with too few keywords or too many. These are the filters you're gonna need to tweak in order to like narrow it down to 10 to 15. This got it right on my first try. It narrowed down 8,000 keywords to nine, so I don't have to go further, but let me just explain you know, how this, what logic it's using. It's saying one to 40 and then ranking competitors six. Um, now I actually put in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna narrow, I'm gonna put five. I'm gonna put minimum five ranking competitors. Let me see if this opens it up to any more keywords. It might not even add any more. Uh let's take a look. Okay, it didn't even add any more uh, when I put five. All right. Um, but the point is I'm looking for the keywords that not just one of the main products are ranking for, not just two, but like 70, 80% of who I determined as the main players in this niche, they probably should all be ranking for this keyword if it's the top keyword that's related to the group as a whole. The other thing that it's doing um, is it's putting a minimum search volume of 500. I can play with that number going up or down depending on how many results I have. But right here, uh, I have now the top keywords that uh, you know, are related to this niche as a whole. And for example, uh, I can take a look at this keyword here, coffin shelves. And why did this come up? Well, take a, take a look here. Um, if I go to this column here, coffin shelves, I can see that, look at this, one of the keywords is rank one, or I'm sorry, one of the products is one, another is three, another is five, 12, 13, 17, 18, and 19. That's crazy. Like every single one of these competitors are like in the top 20. So that's obviously one of the top products. All right. Now let's just stay on this search here and let's go to now number six, which is how to find the top sponsored keywords for a niche. All right. So what, th these are the top organic, but maybe I'm wondering, Hey, what are the keywords that most uh, of the competitors are, are, are running sponsored ads for? And not only that, but they're kind of like showing up uh, on average a little bit higher in the search results. Let me show you guys how to do that here as far as number six goes, all right? So I'm going to take away all of these uh, other filters that I did, all right? Um, I'm gonna, I am gonna. might go ahead and put a, a minimum search volume of 200. Uh, I, I don't want a lot of the, the, the nonsense keywords to come up that I'm not gonna focus on. I'm, remember, I'm looking for the, the top. So I'm gonna say sponsored rank. Let's go ahead and uh, I wanna see at least, let's just say at least four of them spawn, uh, you know, running sponsored ads. And if I were to take the average position of where they're showing up, I would love it for it to be between one and, and let's just say, yeah, 50. Let's do one and 50. And then I'm gonna hit apply filters. Now, what comes up here? 40 keywords, all right? So that's a little bit high for me. Let's see if I can I can take this down a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and, and take it down to sponsored rank average between one and 30, all right? And I'm gonna hit apply filters again. And then now I've got 11 keywords. Now, let's take a look at these keywords again and see why they came up. One of these is coffin shelf for wall, all right? If I look here at the sponsored rank count, what does this mean? This means how many of these top competitors are all running sponsored ads? And every single one of them are because it says eight here. And what is the average rank is 30. So, you know, it, on average, most of these ones are all, or first of all, they're all um, bidding against this keyword. And on average, they're on the first page 
uh, and ma or max the second page of sponsor results. So again, I can see across the niche what are the keywords that these top players in the game are all ranking for. Now, uh, I love this one. Uh, this is number seven on our list of top 25. By the way, guys, I can already tell there is no way I'm going to finish this in one episode, so we're definitely going to have to split this into two. But number seven is how to find the keywords that most of the top competitors are all sleeping on. When would this be the case? You know, we already found the most important keywords, right? Because most everybody who is the top player in a niche, they all know the top keywords, like coffin shelf. You know, they're, they're, you're not going to find a top coffin shelf who doesn't understand that they're you know, that their listing needs to be ranked high. Uh, if they didn't understand that, guess what? They wouldn't be one of the top sellers of coffin shelves. However, there's a lot of different keywords that somebody could be getting sales from. And sometimes there's only one or two competitors who kind of like um, get it, as it were, on certain keywords where they discover, you know, through social media or through Pinterest or whatever, some keywords that they are relevant for that most, if not all of the other competitors they don't even realize that it's relevant to their niche, right? And these are important because what happens is if, if you can find a, a keyword where only one or two out of your top eight or 10 competitors are crushing it on, guess what? Unlike those other keywords like coffin shelf, you're not having to compete with all 10 of them to get to that first page. Now, does that mean if there's 10 all ranking on page one, oh, I'm just going to give up on that? No, no, no. It's still important, but you just got to understand it's going to cost a lot more money through PPC and it's going to be a lot more competitive to compete with 10 different people. But imagine if there's a keyword out there where there's only one coffin shelf showing up. That means somebody who's in the market for a coffin shelf and they just happen to use this random word to look for it. Instead of having to fight 10 other coffin shelves for the attention of this customer, you're only fighting one or two. You guys see how beneficial this could be? Let me show you how to find that with just one click, all right? So I'm still here on this coffin shelf multi ASIN search. I'm gonna just go ahead and clear all my filters I did, and I'm gonna just hit this one filter. We call this opportunity keywords because there's, an, uh, there's more of an opportunity on these keywords, and this came out with 28, all right? Uh, if I wanted to do it manually, um, I would be running things like competitor performance score uh, under five and at least one and max two ASINs. That means I'm looking for uh, at least one, but no more than two ASINs are ranking in the top 15. So if I wanted to narrow this down, if I think 28 is too much, maybe I'll go one to 10 on this instead of one to 15. Let's see what that does to this list. It takes it from 28 to 14. Now, take a look here. Let's take a look at some of these keywords and see why they didn't show up as one of the main keywords. For example, coffin decor, all right? Uh, coffin bed. Like who would have known that coffin bed is something that would be relevant to coffin shelf? Like you'd think that's completely different products, but take a look here. This is searched for, what's the search volume here? This is searched for 1500 times a month. So that's a pretty significant keyword. And now if I were to look here, look at this. There are only four competitors even out of these eight that are even ranking for it, but only one of them is in the top 10. The others are ranked like 100, 150, and 200, and one of them is ranked seven. So what does that mean? That means, you know, the, the reason why this, this one coffin shelf got on the top 10 of this keyword, they must have got some, a couple of sales at least for coffin bed. What does that mean? That means that there are some people who search coffin bed and they are interested in buying a coffin shelf. Right now, if somebody searches coffin bed and they happen to be one of those customers who'd be considering a coffin shelf, they're only seeing one coffin shelf out there, right? And they're gonna buy it. So if you have another coffin shelf and you get on page one for this keyword, guess what? You're gonna now take 50% of the sales, theoretically speaking, if not more, of the, those customers who are looking for a coffin shelf, even though they typed in coffin bed. Now you see why we call these opportunity keywords. You're not fighting 10 other coffin shelves for the sale. You're only fighting one or two max. Super valuable guys. Rewind this and watch this segment again if, in case you missed it. But 
click that opportunity keywords to find out the keywords that only one or two of your competitors are crushing it on, but nobody else is doing anything decently. All right, let's talk about how to see which organic keywords your competitors are beating you on, all right? Now, going back to this example, I actually didn't choose our coffin shelf as the first one. I just choose some random one, um, which is not a great coffin shelf at all. But what it, what if I had put my product here? What would I, how would I be finding, you know, uh, out what I'm trying to find out here? I would actually go under search volume and probably let, let me clear these filters. Just always start, even though you have the same search guys, always clear the filters and, and start over when you're trying to do these different functions. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to under position rank. That means my product. All right. So if for this to work, this first product has to be mine in this case, guys, it's not. So, so this is not my product, but for this to have worked, I should have put my product first here, but let's just pretend that I am this gothic living coffin rack. I don't even know why they're calling it a coffin rack instead of a coffin shelf. But anyways, so what I'm going to do is I wanna see where my relative rank is low, all right? Now, maybe only a couple of these guys are beating me or I don't care if every single one is beating me, but I put in eight ASINs. Let me, let's just say, hey, I wanna see where I'm, you know, at best fifth out of these eight on, on these keywords. And let's go ahead and put a minimum search volume of 500. And let's go ahead and apply these filters. And there's seven keywords that they came up, that came up here. Now, why did the, these keywords come up? Let's take a look. If I put my mouse over um, the relative rank, it's going to show all of the ranks of these products. And in this situation, my product is the one that is bold. So do you see why it came up here? Uh, for this keyword, there's a bunch of these products that are all ranking for it, but I'm sixth or wait, one, two, three, four. Yeah, I'm I'm actually seventh here, right? I'm actually seventh place, mine is bolded, everybody is ahead of me. So this is, you know, I can put five, I can put three, I can put, if, uh, put two for relative rank. What that means is I, I'm looking for keywords where at best I'm the third, I'm showing up third. Now, relative rank guys is an important metric because relative rank, is kind of like sometimes even more important than organic rank, all right? Because that, you know, a relative rank is where you're showing up compared to your main competitors. Like for example, if I did get on page one of that coffin bed example that I showed you in step six or or quite or strategy number six, maybe I would be 15th my organic rank on that on that page and maybe the competitor is ranked 19th, all right? So you might think, well, 15th and 19th, that's not great organic rank. It's like halfway down the page, right? But remember, for the buyer who, who despite having searched coffin bed, is actually looking for a coffin shelf, what's the relative rank between me and the only other coffin shelf on there? It's one because there's only two coffin shelves on page one and mine is showing up one. So in the mind of that customer who's actually looking for a coffin shelf, I'm pretty much page one position one. Does that make sense? Even though I'm number 15, I'm page one position one in that exact customer because they're not looking for other things. You know, there's people who might uh, type in pillow in Amazon, but they're really looking for a neck pillow for an airplane. If you type pillow into Amazon, there's going to be you know, a lot of bed pillows that show up and, and maybe a sofa pillow or whatever, right? But if I am looking for a neck pillow, th th those other products might as well be not even there. They might as well be invisible. I'm completely skimming over it. I'm just browsing that page looking for the first neck pillow I see. Now, every neck pillow on that page, they should kind of like think about that as the relative rank, all right? So relative rank is something super important to be looking at when you're talking about your own product, comparing it in Cerebro against others. This is a metric that I think a lot of sellers sleep on. I want every single one of you guys right now or after this podcast, if, if you're driving or something, you know, put in as the seed ASIN, the first ASIN in Cerebro, your ASIN, throw in five, 10 of your top competitors and take a look at the relative rank and 
and find all the ones that you are not number one in. That is super relevant to your, you know, to your niche. Now, you know, if, if you're selling a coffin shelf and your relative rank for gothic toothbrush is five, you know, is that really important? Probably not, you know, but, but for anything that somebody could search for and buy your product, you know, you theoretically speaking, you would love to be relative rank one for all of those, regardless of your organic page rank. All right. So keep that in mind, guys. Super important. That was uh, strategy number eight. I don't even know how I'm going to finish this in two episodes. I'm only in eight and I've got like 17 more to go. So let me let me see how more I can how many more I can fit in here. All right. Strategy number nine, how to find the keywords that your competitors are on the first couple of pages for, but you aren't even ranking and you possibly aren't even indexed for those keywords. So let's go back to our uh, the same search. Now, again, I didn't put my coffin shelf in here. This is just some random product that's not doing very well. So probably most of these keywords, <laughs> everybody's beating them on. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into position rank, all right, position rank, and I'm going to put a zero min and zero max, all right? But I am going to say I want to find the ones where, you know, some competitors are on the first couple of pages for. So let's just say... Show me the ones where at least two competitors, all right, at least two, no max here. So I'm doing advanced rank filter, minimum two. And then the second advanced rank filter, I'm going to say uh, a min of one and a max rank of, let's just say, um, first two pages, let's just say 90, all right? So I'm looking for at least two of them are ranking in the top two pages, but me, I am not ranking anywhere in the top seven pages. And I would imagine a lot of keywords are gonna are gonna show up here. Yep, and sure enough, look at this. There's 90 keywords. Guys, if this is the case for you, 90 keywords show up here and you do this search, you got some problems. Now, the reason why this so many came up is because this coffin shelf is garbage. You know, they're probably selling like three, four units a month. So I expected this. If I were to run my coffin shelf in there, it would probably be less than 20 keywords, you know, might come up here, all right? Now, look at these keywords. Um, there's pastel goth decor, you know, vampire decor. You know, uh, there's tons of different keywords here that you might have slept on, and, and I am not ranking. But by me putting zero and zero inside of position rank, and and the reason is because right here, the position rank means that first ASIN. The, they're not ranked at all. Now I have another video that incorporates like Frankenstein and index checker and a bunch of other tools. So I, I would go to our YouTube channel and, and searched for, um, you know, uh, what's that? I don't know how it would be called, but how to find keywords you might not be indexed for. Uh, you should see a specific video. Uh, that's like a, a five minute video in itself on how Maybe some of these, not only am I not ranking for it, but I not I might not even be searchable. I might not even be indexed for it, meaning I probably can't run PPC on these keywords at all. And I need to put them in my listing. But this is super simple, guys. This, it takes you like three or four minutes to do, or this part here takes you 30 seconds to do. You can instantly see where your competitors are showing up, at least a couple of them on the first couple of pages, but you are not even ranked at all. Now that other video I just referred to, um, takes it a step farther and sees how many of these individual words that maybe you're not even indexed for. All right, so that is number nine. Number 10, how to see which keywords have page one results where almost no one has the keyword in the title. Let's hop right back into the same exact search that we have done, all right? Same thing, remember, whenever we do a new one, always clear the filters. So I wanna see you know, maybe search volume minimum 400. And um, it would be kind of cool to see where, let's see, or keywords that have page one results. So I would say, hey, there's at least one of these main competitors are, you know, between rank one and rank 50. I'm going to do, all right? At least one of these competitors is between one and 50, but the title density has a max of three. Now, what does title density mean? I might be talking gibberish to some of you guys out there. Title density is exclusive to Helium 10. We're the first to have this and the only to have this. You know, Others, I'm sure, will come out with it. But it basically means 
the last time Helium 10 checked, how many listings on page one have that searched term or phrase inside of the title, right? Because this is kind of a great way to see how easy or difficult it's going to be to get to page one. And it also, you know, will let, you know, will let you know uh, if you do have this in your title and nobody else does, you might get to page one even without any sales at all, right? So let's go ahead and see how many uh, this query comes up. And we have got, let's see, 164 filtered words. Now you're going to see a lot of just kind of like random keywords here, like Tim Burton decor, kawaii, that's uh, Japanese for cute home decor, um, aesthetic shelves. But look at this Gothic house decor, all right? Gothic house decor. Where's there, where's this search volume at? This, uh, this is actually not searched for that much. That's not a good example. It's only searched for 400 times a month. Here we go. Pastel goth decor. Now, if I had a pink coffin shelf, you know, don't you think that would probably be, you know, qualify for pastel goth decor? Now, this keyword is actually searched for 2,000 times a month. All right. Now, the title density, the title density, the last time Helium 10 checked is one, one. What does that mean? Out of 50 listings potentially on page one on the search results for pastel goth decor, only one product has that exact keyword phrase in the title. All right. So, you know, th th this could be a great way to do product research to maybe find a line extension or maybe uh, something that you're like, you know what? This I think is super, super relevant to my listing. And I know everybody's performing well for it, but they're not, they don't have this keyword in their title. So even if they get activity on that keyword, they're not going to have as much bang for their buck. You know, they're not going to increase in the rank as much as I would if I had this keyword in the title. And you can take this strategy, guys. This this is the number 10 strategy, by the way. You can take this and, and do some crazy things with it. You know, like for example, uh, I, I could use, I could combine some of the other uh, strategies that we've been talking about um, and say something like, hey, um, what, uh, where are the pr uh, keywords where my competitors, uh, at least four of them are ranking the top 30, you know, meaning they're on page one, but none of them have it in the title or only one of them have it on the title. I mean, the, the possibilities are endless with these filters here. And then you can instantly know where you're going to be able to crush it. You know, um, you can even be doing this to your own listing and maybe there's a keyword you don't have in the title and you're not doing well on. And you're like, you know what? Nobody else has this keyword in the title. And I've been having trouble getting to page one. Let me go ahead and, you know, adjust my title a little bit. Um, you don't want to take out any keywords from your title where you're, you're, you're ranking really high for it's not usually best practice, but maybe there's some needless keywords there in the title. You can kind of, you know, take out and replace and, and put this in and you might see just instantly within a day or two, your, your rank increase. And you're going to see your performance, your, your rank increase for sure. If you're running heavy PPC to that keyword and you're actually getting conversions for it. So this is a great strategy guys. Uh, number 10. All right. We're going to go ahead and stop part a here. I got to pick up the pace in part B in our next episode. In a few days, I'm going to go ahead and finish this off this masterclass. And I'm going to try and get 15 more strategies, um, into there, but I hope you guys, um, have fa had fun with this. This is a great stopping point, uh, stopping point anyways, before we get to the, the next 15 strategies, I want you guys running every single one of these, every single one of these guys is something that you should be doing regardless of if you're selling on Amazon or Walmart. There, these are great strategies to be using to, um, if you're trying to research a new key, uh, niche, or those of you who are already selling, ha especially you big sellers out there, have your teams jump into these top 10 strategies and see what kind of insights come out. All right. I hope you guys enjoy this and I'll see you in part two in a few days. Mm -hmm.